Hey guys, my name is Javier Perez and I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation's Visual Arts Service Group. I've been in the industry for about nine years now. In this lesson, we'll be going over how to create a foliage atlas inside a substance designer. We will be covering techniques, thought processes, and general understanding of how the material was made. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm just gonna go ahead and start a brand new graph here. I'm just gonna call it a uh, foliage demo. I'm gonna go ahead and save it into the appropriate folder just in case we do have a crash for any uh, reason. Um, so I'm gonna start out by creating the initial grass blade for this material. Um, I start out with just a basic shape of a disc and then I take a transform and squash it in on the X. That way we get kind of that nice thin shape like you would find on a grass blade. I then take a trapezoid transform and then taper it at the very top. That way we get like this nice peaking at the very top. Um, the blade itself is a little sharp on the edges so I do a non-uniform blur grayscale and then blend it within itself at a low opacity. At this point, I plug in all of my um, outputs. So plug into the height, the ambient occlusion, normal. That way we can kind of see what's going on in the 3D viewport. And I'm just making sure that my material is set to the correct settings. So for example, I'm making sure that direct X is off because I am working in OpenGL. So once I have uh, the grass blade, I want to give it a, a subtle warp so it's not completely straight up and down. So I do that by doing a purlin noise into a directional warp and just setting it to kind of a low um, amount. Once we have that grass blade, we're ready to start plugging into the tile sampler. Before I kind of start messing with the parameters in the tile sampler, there are a few inputs that I'd like to connect. So I start off with just a basic shape. Um, I believe it's a thorn and I create a few different outputs that I know that will help me when I'm creating my grass patch. So these outputs, um, they'll be plugged into the rotation map input, the vector map input and the mask map input. This is just gonna help me create a small little patch with the existing blade that I just created. So once I have those inputs all set up, I just plug in and then with those already plugged in, I can start messing with the actual parameters here. And I'm just kind of plugging and playing here, um, messing with a few settings uh, that I know work based off the finished graph. Um, so feel free to either follow along or start with your own kind of values and see what you guys come up with. Um, ideally would really like you guys to kind of mess with the values and see what kind of um, results you guys get. Um, with every subtle um, change in the parameters, you might get something completely different. So once I have that all nice to my liking, I bring in a transform and just slightly move it down so it's not clipping at the very top. Um, just we want to get the uh, grass patch in the center as much as possible. So once we have this patch uh, ready to go, I'm going to kind of start uh, on a new smaller graph. And this is just going to be a completely different grass blade. This time, instead of using a shape, I'm actually doing a splatter circular here. And I'm just messing with some values that will give me a nice tapered um, grass blade, almost like it's been curved slightly. So here you kind of see me um, moving into place and then rotating it. Once I have it at a good rotation, I then bring in a transform and then kind of um, hand place it to where I want it. So in the center of the actual 2D plane. Just um, once I start manipulating this piece, I want to make sure that it's in the center of the 2D space. So that's why I tend to move my things um, into the center of that space. So like, like what we did previously on the old glass blade, uh, we just want to give it a subtle warp so it's not so perfect. Um, I do that by a directional warp and a purlin noise, just something subtle. And with that, we're basically, basically going to take the um, exact same tile sampler that we used previously, plug in the same inputs that we were using, and begin to mess with the parameters of this guy. 
So on the mask, I do change it slightly. That way we get some different results as uh, compared to the initial grass blade. So we just want to get two different patches that feel a little bit different. So not only with the actual input of the grass blade, but also the mask that we're plugging into the tile sampler. So I'm going in and making sure everything is named accordingly. And with the inputs all plugged in, I start messing with the parameters to my liking. Again, um, I'm just plugging in values um, from the finished graph that I have off screen. Uh, these were just values that I felt worked for what I was trying to achieve. Um, feel free to kind of um, plug in any values or just mess around with the different parameters to get some different results you guys like. Um, more or less, you'll, based on the parameters I'm messing with, you'll get similar results to me. So as long as you're not going too far off of what's going on screen, you should be fine. Again, I just take the transform and just move it to the center because I'm going to blend these two patches together. I want them to be sitting relatively in the same spot. So that's why um, I move them to the center and to blend them. I just do a height offset. That way we have the nice depth and we can um, blend them based on the height values and the grayscale values. So once we're all blended in, I want to cut off the edges because when I actually map this onto some geo, I just want the bottoms to be completely cut off. You know, I don't want any excess um, grass pieces just going into the um, plane that we are actually going to map this guy onto. And finally, I just do a nice subtle blur. That way our edges aren't as sharp. So now we're moving on to actually creating the color for this guy. Um, I'm just going to take the result of the height and plug it into an ambient inclusion and blend it in itself. Um, once we have that, uh, I want to add a little bit of noise. That way the gradient can have a little bit more information to play with once we start um, adding some colors in here. So that fractal sum is giving it just a little bit extra noise. That way the gradient has a little bit um, more to work with. So here I'm just sampling off screen of some grass pieces that I like. Just try to get something that um, gives you a nice uh, variation of colors here. Next up, I'm gonna give it some slight variation with the different grass blades. I do that by bringing in an HSL and then blending it um, into itself. But I'm bringing in a histogram select and I'm messing with the parameters from the height that way it gives me a different mask and it just selects a few of the grass blades that we can include into this mask for the different colors. So you'll notice how only a few of the blades are getting this nice uh, reddish tone to them. And that's thanks to the uh, histogram select that I have there. We're going to start adding some more variation. Um, I'm basically just doing, taking the result of the height map with the fractal sum and I'm creating another gradient. I just want a, some more variation. So choosing some different colors here, um, something that's a little bit different from the original gradient that I chose, something that's a little bit brighter, more saturated, maybe a little bit um, darker on the lightness. And again, I'm just blending that into itself, but I'm making sure to choose just a grunge map that I like into the um, opacity of that blend. So far, so good. I'm just messing with the height here, or sorry, with the ambient occlusion, making sure it's all good. And I plugged in the color just to see what's going on here. Again, uh, with the grass blades, I wanna add a slight gradient so that it's brighter at the top and a little bit darker at the bottom. So again, another HSL, and I'm just messing with the gradient that's controlling the blend of this guy. But you notice how the top is a little bit lighter and it just progressively gets darker toward the bottom. So I'm just messing here, trying to find something that I like. Cool. Uh, next up, I'm going to add just the final curvature on this albedo. I think it really helps it pop the edges a little bit and we kind of get a better sense of the forms going on in the um, albedo. 
So it just highlights the edges a little bit and it's something that I like doing at the end of my albedo. Just moving things into place. And to get my roughness, um, I basically take what we had prior to the curvature and I add a grayscale conversion node. This gives me a little bit of parameters that I can play with. So it gives me the RGBA and I just slightly tweak them to I slightly tweak them to find something that'll work for my roughness. Lastly, um, we are missing a single input. So um, I go ahead and copy the output of the um, height and then I create a brand new output and just name it opacity. Make sure it's set it to opacity. That way the 3D viewport can read it from what's going on. And here I'm just doing some final tweaks, trying to get some nice variation in here into our first grass patch. Again, making sure everything is nice and neat and naming things accordingly. Cool, so this is our first grass patch. I'm just naming it Grass01. And next up, we're actually going to create our next um, set of grass. We're actually gonna make a tall variation here. So to begin, we're gonna be using the same techniques that we did in the first grass patch. So here I'm just doing the same treatment that I did with the curved grass patch, or sorry, grass blade. So I'm just using the splatter circular and what you could do here is you can go back into the original grass and just copy the same input if you like. But here I'm just starting off from scratch and just recreating it just to give you guys an idea of um, how this works. So again, on this guy, I want to have two different variations. So I'm going to actually just have different um, Perlin noises intensities on these guys. They're more or less going to be the same shape, but as far as the, the warpness to them, they're going to be slightly different. I found that this gives me enough variation when I plug into the tile sampler. Again, making sure everything is named. I like framing everything to know where everything is. And this is where we're actually plugging in the tile sampler. So again, like we did on the previous one, we're using the same um, inputs that we did last time. So again, this is a perfect opportunity if you guys want to actually uh, grab the inputs from the last uh, grass blade or we can uh, just create them from scratch like we are here. I dock my um, uniform color with the by hitting the letter D on the keyboard. I just find it a little bit cleaner when um, I just have a uniform color that I know is just gonna stay there. With the mask, I slightly mess with it a little bit. That way we get a different result than we did on the previous grass patches. So I do a levels and then squash it in a little bit. And once I have those inputs in, this is where, again, I just start creating, or sorry, messing with the different parameters and um, trying to create a nice uh, grass patch. For this one, we want to get something a little bit taller um, as compared to the first grass patch. So um, the scale on the Y axis might be a little bit different or a little bit higher than it was on the last one. Again, you guys can follow along on the um, numbers that I'm inputting here, here, or you can feel free to just um, plug in whatever numbers you feel um, work for you guys. So here we're already starting to get something that's looking pretty good. Um, like right there, I would say is looking pretty cool. I bring it in that transform because I want to bring it down, but I'm noticing that when I turn off the tiling, it's still cutting it off. So um it's like a different it's like a fight between using the transform and the tile sampler i find that going back to the tile sampler and messing with a few parameters uh ends up giving me the result i want but i'll still have that um i'll still have that transform in there just in case that i need to bring it down so here i'm just messing with the different parameters and seeing where i could mess um values that'll help me bring that grass patch more to the center of the 2D space. A 
found that messing with the Y, bringing it down slightly, is going to give me that smaller piece of grass that just barely fits on the 2D there. So once we have this guy, um, we're doing the same thing that we did previously. We're going to create another tile sampler, plug in the same inputs, and pretty much just mess with the parameters again. It's a very streamlined process. Um, we're essentially redoing um, what we did previously. Um, I found that this just gives me some nice variations in the grass patches. On this one, there is only one input instead of the two from the um, earlier one. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're creating this tile sampler. What I did with this one, I ended up just copying the tile sampler from above and just duplicating it and just plugging in that single grass blade. So from here, I just end up tweaking uh, stuff. But because we had like some pretty good values previously, it only took like just tweaking just some to get the result I'm looking for. Messing with the color random because I know that'll help a lot when we're, cre uh, when we're creating the height and when we're going to blend these two guys together. So I take a height blend here. I accidentally used a blend uh, on accident, so watch out for that. Um, and again, I just want to bring in that transform to move that second patch to where I would like it on top of the um, kind of taller looking patch. At this point, I start plugging everything in again just to see how it's looking, how it's working, making sure it's starting to look uh, relatively how I'd like it to. Again, I'm um, doing this trick here to cut off the bottom edge of the grass blade. That way, um, when we map it, we don't, we're not worried about any excess uh, grass poking through. I do a final blur just to slightly um, give it a nice subtle bevel towards the edges and then a taper. I felt that the taper helped to sell the tall grass patch a little bit more. So for this guy, um, I basically went back into the original grass patch and I completely copied all the work we did the, in the albedo. I felt that for time and just consistency, this helped a lot. Uh, we get essentially the same colors and um, you know we can tweak as we'd like on the colors that we already have with the gradients. So. It was a lot quicker iteration here. Again, just going through all the different nodes, making sure everything is set. Just had to slightly tweak some things. And then again, I went back into the grass and then copied the output for the opacity mask here. Naming everything accordingly. And once again, just saving everything. And now we have two different grass patches. We have the tall and we have just the regular small grass patch. Cool. So next up, we're going to start on the fern here. I would say that the fern is probably the most um, complex part of this uh, tutorial. So. It was a lot easier to do just these grasses, but this one, um, it's a little bit more work, but I would say the same fundamentals that we were doing with the grass patches um, is there. We're continuing to use the tile samplers and more or less here on the intro when we're creating this initial leaf pattern, um, I would say we're using the same kind of techniques to get that taper on the grass blades as well. So, for this guy, uh, the initial leaf consists of just a shape that we squashed down. We did a trapezoid to taper the top. And I'm just doing some blurs here. Here I'm messing with uh, the shape so we can actually add a stem on this guy. So using a transform to rotate. And then I'm just going to add on top of that leaf shape. So now we have that. Um, lighter color on the actual leaf shape which will essentially bring that up on the normal map and give us the impression of a stem 
Next up, like we did in the previous uh, grass um, graphs, uh, we did have some inputs that we plugged into the tile sampler for this guy. Those inputs are a little bit different. I'm using mostly gradients that help the tile sampler figure out how to rotate these leaves to get kind of that um, look of fern wood. So once we start messing and tweaking these parameters, you guys will get a better sense of what's going on here. Um, the gradients from white to black help tell the tile sampler how to scale and rotate things. So for example, um, the gradient that's plugged into the rotation, black is gonna stay pretty relative to what it is, but as it gets closer to white, you start getting that slight rotation. So once I plug in or start bringing up the rotation map multiplier here, you guys will kind of see what's going on. So I slightly rose it to like 0.15 and you guys can kind of see there's like that angle that's going on now. Um, and again, just going through and tweaking some more things adding that color randomness that'll help um, kind of break up the height map a little bit. One thing to note on these guys, um, it's always a good idea to just start messing with the random seed a little bit. You'll be surprised what kind of variations you guys can get. So again, I'm just going in and tweaking some settings to get them to what I would like. So once I have it somewhere relatively to what I'm looking for, I add a skew grayscale just to give it a little bit more um, deformality. Just want to break it up a little bit more. And then I take that transformation and um, again, I use that to just place that uh, pattern in the middle because I know that I'll be adding some stuff on top of it. What I did here was I duplicated that small graph and I take a height blend and that transform on the bottom one is actually just used to move it into place. So we start getting that fern shape. And once I have it relatively to where I like, I can take that tile sampler that we duplicated and just start messing with some parameters. Um, the, the values are there from what my liking, but I just want to differentiate it from the tile sampler that we just uh, created. So just subtle changes and subtle tweaks that way it's not completely a one-to-one -one copy and we're just like mirroring this guy so once we have that i'm just messing with the height blend and how it's blending and making sure it's all looking good next up i want to add some uh, random gradients on the leaves that way it kind of helps the height and also the normal when the light is going on top of these leaves. It just breaks up the angles of these guys. So, so the angles won't feel almost just flat. This, the flood fill is really going to help break up those um, leaves with some gradients on top. It's a little subtle, but it helps a lot once you have the light hitting these guys. So you can kind of see me comparing those two. We just get some slight gradients in there. And you'll find me um, doing this a lot where I go back into the graph and just move these leaves slightly to somewhere um, that fit a little bit better. At this point, this is where I'm plugging in the the uh, what I have so far into the outputs. So just so we can kind of see in the 3D viewport what's going on. Here I add a slight gradient, that way the edges of the leaves on the outer are just going to poke up a little bit so it gives the impression of just some indentation. I went back where we originally grabbed the, or sorry, where we created the stem for the single leaves and I basically just copied that graph and I'm creating a stem for the overall shape of this fern that we have so far. So just going in and I'm actually gonna warp it by taking some gradients and tiling it. So you can kind of see the result it gives here once we start tweaking these guys. 
kind of gives us a little zigzaggy um, shape here. And again, that transform is there so we can move it into place to where I feel it works best. I don't want the stem to just be overlaid on top of the whole thing. So that's why I plug in that purlin with the levels. So it can kind of seep in and out of the leaves a little bit. And again, like I mentioned, I'm just going back and moving those leaves into a better position that I felt uh, looked a little better. Cool. Another gradient here. That way the bottom of this fern is just darker and then to the right is um, in the wider values. That way it almost gives the impression of like the end, the tip of the fern is just lifted slightly. Here I'm just adding some purlin noise on top of the whole leaf just to give some sort of slight undulation, some slight noise, break up those flat surfaces a little bit more. We're gonna take a non-uniform blur grayscale and this is just gonna help give a slight bevel on the edges of these leaves so they're not as sharp and the normal map will have a better time reading this guy. Once we have that, um, we're gonna start plugging in this guy into a few different variations. So the first one is just gonna be with the swirl grayscale and the second one is gonna be a directional warp with a um, just a paraboloid and we can move into place and set the intensity. So we basically just want a couple different variations from the initial fern shape that we have. We want these variations because these are gonna be plugged into a tile sampler like we did originally. And again, we're taking the same inputs that we used previously and we're going to be plugging these guys into the tile sampler. So um, just the same kind of gradients that we used earlier. Again, um, it's essentially gonna be the same thing where these guys are gonna dictate how these new shapes that we created are gonna be laid out. So they're gonna give you that slight rotation towards the top and um, it's gonna scale them as they go from left to right. So once we have these guys plugged in and I start messing with parameters, you guys can kind of get a better idea of what's going on here. I noticed that just by tweaking these guys, we start getting some really cool kind of shapes here in the 2D viewport. So could be a um, cool idea to use this um, method to create other things probably in Substance Designer. So again, here when I do the that big rotation, we start essentially seeing what we're going to come up with. And again, just like what we did with the earlier, um, trying to get that one single leaf, we're essentially taking and doing the same um, thing that we did earlier, but with just this gigantic leaf now that has all the other smaller leaves that we just created. Again here, um, I took that transform to move this into place a little bit and then um, I use that blend with the uniform color of black just to mask out because right now the that leaf pattern we have one coming through the bottom and top and I just wanted to be singled out just for in the middle. Again here I'm just messing with some values trying to get something that I like and I'm making sure that it's different from the um, other tile sampler that we have. I just want to make sure that it doesn't look like we just mirrored each side of this fern. Here I'm even going into the tile sampler and just plugging in some new inputs that I thought might work. But uh, towards the end, I just figured uh, keep it, keep things how they are and don't try to introduce anything new here. So that transform right there is basically just doing a um, mirror on the, sorry, it's it's essentially just flipping it on the Y. 
And that way we can now blend those two pieces together. So those uh, transforms are important because they give me a, the ability to hand place where these leaves are and um, make it more believable, I would say. Once I have these two guys next to each other, um, this is where I tend to go back to the tile samplers and kind of start messing with parameters a little bit. Here I just wanted to auto levels the whole thing because we're losing a little bit of the forms that are getting a little too dark. And just like what we did previously, um, again, I'm taking that same stem, that smaller graph that we did earlier and just changing a few of the inputs and a few of the values to get a new stem that we could that could be used for this guy. So again, I'm going back a lot because I'm doing the same procedures. Um, I'm just going back and try to utilize as much as what we have um, as possible. So once we have that stem, um, I wasn't really happy with the way it was looking. Um, it almost looked like we did mirror it, even though we necessarily we didn't actually. So again, I'm just going into the tile samplers and try to find ways to break that up a little bit. Global offset is a good one to move the whole pattern down slightly instead of using it with the transform. So cool one to look out for. The size random is the one I was using the most to try to break this guy up a little bit. Again, the more, the higher the um, input on the rotation map multiplier, the more you'll start getting that angled. And it could be good and bad. You'll get some nice variety, but also the, the actual leaves will start getting kind of pushed away from the stem slightly. So just uh, keep aware of that. Once we have that, um, I do another directional warp just to break it up even more. And again, another transform to make sure it's all in the center of the 2D plane. I do an auto levels and a slight blur as like one of the final tweaks on this guy and just slightly do, um, or sorry, set the blend mode to like a low opacity. Just, it gives us um, a slight blur and then it auto levels the whole piece a little bit. So like we did before, I'm just going to go in and grab the exact same um, color graph that we used previously. Uh, we don't have the same inputs as we did on the grass blades, but it has enough of the same information. So it's just plug and play here. I uh, go ahead and plug the final height that we had on the fern. And I start tweaking some of the values that we have here. So for example, I had to change a few of the gradients that just to conform to the shape of the fern, whereas the gradient was going, or sorry, the grass was going more in a vertical sense. This one's going left to right. And again, I'm taking that same opacity input and copying it over to this graph. I notice here we have some weird kind of striations and that's because on one of the blends, um, it, it was set to 8-bit, so make sure to go back and set it to 16 bits. That way we don't have any weird artifacts or anything like that. Cool. So one thing that I'm doing here is to get the color of the stem to show up, we actually have to go back a little bit on some of these guys and um, grab some of the outputs and just get black and white mass. So here's where you see me going back to where we actually use the blend or the height blend on the stem and using that mask to create a mask for the color channel that we're trying to blend in here. Again, just using the same gradient, but just sampling different colors. So it's more of a color of like a stem. Here we can see that. 
working out nicely. But now at this point, I realize that I would really like to get the stems of the smaller leaves that we created initially. So to do that, um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a mask for just the, um, the smaller stems. And we're essentially going to run it through the exact same set of nodes that we did with that leaf. So you'll see me do that here in a, in a second here. So you see me copying the same graph or sorry, the same nodes that I've been doing throughout the height information. We're just going to copy the, we're going to duplicate those nodes and just run it through the same um, procedures. We do this because, um, it's a one-to-one -one mask of what's going on. So if any node was slightly off or we just say we didn't have a transform in there, it could be offset a little bit and um, the mask wouldn't line up when we actually blend these two colors together. So we start getting that nice. Um, you can see now we have those three different um, stems now and I'm just plugging into the same tile samplers as before now you can kind of see what's going on here so think of it as if we went back and created separate graphs for just the stems without the leaves is essentially what we're doing but we want to make sure that we're keeping consistent throughout the graph as we're going through it there's a few point in times where I missed a node and it just was slightly off. But once you um, once you go back and s making sure that all the nodes are relatively in the same spot, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. I also found that placing the node directly on top of the one that we used to create the height helped a lot. That way we can just, you know, bring the cursor down slightly and see where in the height um, that um, info is happening. So here I add another blend and I'm just using the same um, gradient that we use on the larger stem. Apologize for that, bringing up the windows key. And here we're actually blending that in. So it worked out pretty good. Um, it was slightly, you know, the, it's not as dark as I like. So I threw in a histogram scan to get it more to a black and white mass before it was more of a grayscale mass. So this helped out tremendously towards the end. So the cool thing about uh, the mass that we just created for the different stems is um, we now have a mask to differentiate the roughness values. So here I'm just bringing in a different uniform color for the roughness of the stem. And I'm just plugging in the same mass, and now we can control um, the color that we're using on those stems. So that helps break up the roughness a little bit. So one map that we need to add for this guy, um, because we have branches as opposed to the grass blades we didn't, is a transmittance map. And transmittance essentially tells the shader how much light um, passes through this certain material. So anywhere that you don't want light to pass, um, I made sure to make it white and anything that you want light to pass is light to pass is black. So you'll see that mostly all the leaves are set to black here. And here I'm just messing with the final tweaks here. So once we have all three of these, we want to combine them into an atlas. So to do that, we're just going to bring each different grass blade that we did in the beginning. And we're going to introduce some new um, nodes. Uh, the ones I like to use a lot are the material transform and also the material blend. So with the material transform, we can plug in a full material and it gives us the ability like we do with a regular transform. But instead of doing just a single node it controls the entire material so because we dragged we just drag the um the, the substance graph into this main atlas graph you can kind of see when i start messing with this guy um, it it uh, transforms the entire thing so it's not only affecting one map it's affecting 
all the different maps inside that shader. So here you see me um, combine these two guys here. But you'll notice that we don't have um, both normal maps showing up or roughnesses, etc. Um, that's because the material blend needs uh, a black and white opacity mask to tell it where the blend is happening. So what I did here was I basically just took the roughness app input. Um, I set the blend mode to divide, which gives me this nice black and white mask dependent on where that piece is. And I plug that into the opacity of the material um, blend here. Again, here I'm just creating the outputs that I need. So making sure to create the opacity. That way we have, um, we have one to plug in here. The way I'm grabbing all the different inputs at one time is um, on top of at, on the top bar of where you can select your material type or next to the little time clock that you see up there next to the wrench. There's a way where you can set to change either you want to grab a single node, you want to grab the whole material or all of its connections and etc. So it's really useful when you're working with stuff like this because you don't have to individually um, just grab each connector. It grabs the whole material, which is really nice. And again, I'm just doing the same procedure here, but this time I brought in the fern. So again, just moving into place and I was going to try to put it or stretch it at the bottom, but I figured, um, you know, if we did create another grass patch, that would be a perfect spot for it. So one thing I did differently on this guy was um, there is no input on the material transform for a transmittant mask. So what I did was I just plug in the transmittant mask into a random channel that I wasn't using on the transform. And that was the specular level. And I just used that to plug in um, that input. So some of the final tweaks now that we have all three of the materials in one atlas is I'm just going to create a nice uh, blur and then blend it on top of each other. What this does is that um, it gives you the ability to blur the edges out and this is going to help when you bring in the shader into Unreal and any mipping that happens um, because those colors are kind of blurred. Um, it's just going to help just any bleeding of edges or anything like that because um, it'll bleed into those blurred edges and none of your colors will be lost or anything like that. Same thing goes for the normal map. I'm kind of trying to do the same treatment here. Um, I do a bevel on the opacity mask, the black and white mask, uh, and then plug that into a normal. And then I blend those two normals together on a low opacity. So now we have that nice bleeding on the edge, similar to what we were doing with the, um, the blur on the albedo. Again, it's just in case of any mipping or anything, you know, any, um, I just start to bleed inside of Unreal. For the roughness, um, I just wanted to add some more variety here towards the very end. We, you can either do this at, inside the Atlas or just go back into each um, different piece that you want. I just threw on um, a grunge on top of the roughness to break it up slightly. Um, so just to get more variation in there. So lastly here, um, this is where I go in and add just a little bit more information to the transmit mask. So like I um, mentioned before it tells the shader how much light to pass through. Um, before we were just using black and white from that last fern, but here I'm gonna actually bring in the blue channel of the normal map. And this is just gonna give us some subtle, um, just grayscale values. And what I do is I blend that into that mask that we originally had from the fern. And this just gives us a nice little breakup so it's not 
So the leaves aren't pure white because if they're pure white, all the light would pass through. So here we're introducing a few grayscale values. We're even introducing, um, I'm actually gonna bring in the height map here as well. Um, but you can kind of see me going through the blend modes and just introducing a little bit um, breakup. So setting up the final outputs, this is pretty much our finished product. So for the purpose of the demo, I just created three pieces for the Atlas. I'm going to go ahead and open another Atlas with a lot more variations. And you can kind of see the layout that it's that it has. And it basically we're following the same steps where we created a few different variations of each piece and all by just changing a few parameters in the um, tile sampler. And here I have these pieces in Maya just kind of uh, give you an idea of the models that these um, textures are applied to nothing too crazy and here we have the final product inside of unreal so this is what we're gonna eventually come up with in the next video but i just want to give you guys a small little preview here of what it'll look like in the end i hope you guys learned something and i'll see you guys in the next one peace